ladies and gentlemen, the food train will be leaving in approximately five minutes time. If you want to be healthy and have a happy long life, please jump on board. You guys are from different parts of the state, or mm -hmm. I assume you have a little bit of gardening, not much, or? Oh, yeah. In Minnesota, we, we got to start indoor. There's just no way. You're not going to have, unless you buy seedlings directly, you know, if you want to have tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, uh, whole collection of plants. And it's just, you have to start it for. I mean, if you're in Florida or California, I guess, you know, you, can, you, know, you, know, you don't need to worry about that, but here you do. And uh, it might seem a little daunting uh, or expensive, but it is not. If you want, you can really do that on a shoestring and with very small space. And that's why I bring this contraption here. It's a little ugly. And you think this is great because it's just very simple PVC pieces and then a workbench light. Uh, you can get a light this time for four tubes, but you can get the cheap one that are five dollars at Menards that has two tubes and then put two of them. And then uh, this is perfect for a, a table. It's just the size of a table. And then just perfect for, uh, you know, if you have two uh, uh, sets of light, four tubes, it's just perfect for uh, this size uh, trays. So, the only important things about this, you're going to need also a little timer, the cheapest you can find, right? Because you really need a very long, like 10 hour kind of light. The other thing that's very important is this, uh, uh, there's two things. You don't need to spend a lot of money on grow light. You can just use warm. They come in two, the uh, fluorescent tube come in two uh, types, warm and cold. And they both, the cold is a blue spectrum, the warm is a kind of yellow red spectrum. And by alternating them, you have a full spectrum, which is just enough, plenty for your plant. So, lights, the other important thing is your lights, and this is where the beauty of this uh, very simple construction is that you can adjust the height. Your light has to be three inches max above the foliage. And you can do, then you can have plants that are taller on one side, and shorter back there, then you just adjust it, right? Now you don't want your plant to touch the light. It can be very close, but not touch it. If you, I mean, just for a short while, if they touch for too long, it damage the leaves, right? It's not very hot like a, like a light bulb, but it still damage the leaves. So you have a table, you have that in the basement, and things like that. You're gonna need a place that's not too cool. Uh, seedlings, need, in general, seeds need 70 degrees to start. So you have a lot of money, you can buy, some people buy uh, heating mats, you know, electrical kind of things that you put underneath. They, they're a little bit pricey. But when I do my seedlings, I use warm water, lukewarm water. So I have a little, and uh, I'll, you know, I'll talk about that further later, I cover it uh, sometime with cellophane, so it can keep these warms in there. Uh, but if you have a room that's relatively warm, I just warn you that the basement that's too cold is gonna slow things down a little bit. It's very important that all those trays have drainage. You don't want anything, this one has no drainage, and you don't want that unless you have it as a, you know, with a, another one on the top and you can take that out. Your seedling, if they sit in the water, they're not gonna like it. They're not gonna, those are not aquatic plant and they're not gonna be happy. So you want this as the holes in the bottom and that's what you want. So what you're gonna have to do is some kind of a plastic sheet, so some system, you could, you know, rig something so the table is a kind of a, a higher on three quarter and, and then and have a bucket, so when you water it drains into a bucket. You're gonna have to figure out something, right? Uh, so for, for your water. Now, when it comes to this, uh, you go to uh, Menards or Home Depot and they'll, they'll sell you one tray like that, it's very expensive, you know, uh, or they sell you this little pit pot. And I'm not really uh, very, I don't really like them. Uh, they are too long, too much for the kids, you know, and it doesn't work very well. They have a tendency to dry too fast also. Um, so I recommend this, and the, what I did is uh, I had no money when I started doing things with the kids, and I went to uh, one of Carlton uh, uh, Greenhouse, and I said, uh, you know, I'm doing, I'm growing stuff for the kids, I have no money, do you, do you have any pots? I said, oh yeah, boom, and they gave me a stack of uh, things. You know, every year or so, I save those. 
right? And then uh, I stir, I, we wash them in, uh, every year in a you know, big tub when they get bad, I throw them out. But I, I save them, wash them with a little bit of bleach because you want to sterilize that. But anyway, all my pots, all that, and you know, if they break, I don't hold them up. Yeah. <laughs> and I have two broken ones and they still work. Another year with it. But I got all of this from uh, green, I, I went to a whole bunch of different greenhouses, and they always have stuff that they have used. That I use. I also, uh, uh, if you want a, you know, some bigger pots, that's what I do. I save my uh, yogurt. I go to a recycling center, and then I make holes. So again, you always want to have a, a drainage. The next thing you're going to need is your starting starting mix. So when it comes to this, spend the money on the good soil starting. Seeds have a lot of inches, very small plants. They're very sensitive, what we call damping off. It's kind of a, a fungi disease, and uh, uh, you, you want to avoid that. It's really heartbreaking when they have a whole, you know, seed starting and they all start to, uh, you know, they look good and then suddenly so they, they all uh, <laughs> kind of look, uh, they die, right? So I get this this mix. It's uh, they come in three about four cubic. Feet, bail, compressed. I think it's called BX, and I'm not sure. I don't want to, you know, I'm not promoting any special brand, but that's the way. But uh, this is a mix. Uh, it has a little perlite, um, and I get it from Dan's Feed Bean. It's a local uh, uh, feed meal, I guess, is that what you call it? Uh, it's low prices, it's around 30, $32 for a bale. But I can guarantee you, it's, it's uh, four cubic feet, it's a big bale compressed. Can do you know if you just do few trays with the kids you're gonna have that for two or three years and if you keep it kind of closed like in a garbage bag and you don't have any contamination this thing is good for as long as it's there the advantage is that it's sterile and also it's made with uh, peat moss uh, which is not the most renewable and then it has perlites and things like that but it's really it high uh, uh, high moisture retention. That's what you want for your seeds, and a good aeration, which is also very important for your seedlings. To succeed, you want you want to really give uh, everything you can to that 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 seed. You know, if you imagine you put a bean in there, bean is pretty large, and I can guarantee you, when it starts making roots, man, that, in two days it's down there right there at the bottom, and that's all you have for this little bean, and it's gonna be in there or a tomato. Or, uh, I give them a, a, one of those this morning and we put a little, again, and seeds, the kids make little hole. We put our seeds in there and I said, please, make sure you see this right on the top. Not always on the bottom, but again, you know, this thing is going to shoot and no room for the thing. So just right on top and then we cover them and then we water. You always water you know, after you see it. Um, now, castor beans or sunflowers and maybe even squash. I do it directly in, in larger pots like this, and uh, I do the same technique. I fill it, tap it, fill it, tap it till it's it's full, and then plant in there. Now, there are, so that's a large seed. That's a kind of medium-sized seed, and then you have seeds like this one here, the little guy here. And uh, what I do for that, and again. We want drainage, right? but same thing. I do a tray, and then very important is this tray. I'm gonna entirely fill it all to the top, tap it, so it's like, and then I take my seeds and I just sprinkle the whole thing. Water, and that's it. So you have three different techniques. This soil, when you get the ba and, uh, in the bale, it's compressed, and it's just, you're gonna have to be really careful because this is just like, well, you have to break it. It's really hard, you break it and make clumps, and it's just like fine dust, and I, may, I know it makes me cough, right? But I always wet it, and that for the dust. But also, when you put it in there, it works a lot better. It's already, you know, it, it, it has, when the tapping works when it's already moist. Not wet, but moist. The way it is right now, it's kind of fine. It could be a slightly moisture, but it is already moist, right? If it, there are, each seed has its own time, and then you can have depending. You know, if you're from Minneapolis or if you're from Grand Marais, and there's a difference. It's going to be a couple of weeks, so you're going to have to find. You know, things like tomatoes, they're going to need a month to two months in that little spot indoor before you take them outside. If you want, you know, tomato before September, all right? Uh, 
onions take a very long time. You can start the onions because they are really tiny and they stay tiny for a long time. You can just start your onions at the end of January, maybe in February, right? Uh, now, uh, the other things like squash, uh, those things germinate just by looking at them. You know, they, uh, they, they're going to germinate very fast. Or, uh, so you, you're going to need three, four weeks, you know, for your squash. You don't want squash when they get really big and then leggy. You don't want them to sit very long time in the pot, you know. So you're going to have to find, you can ask your uh, local uh, uh, greenhouse, farmer, look it up online. There's tons of stuff online. Uh, just figure out for each plant when you're going to need, you know, kind of staggering uh, thing. Now, like tomatoes or peppers, you do that for a long time. So they are this little tiny things for a long time, and they don't do very well for a very long time. No, no say, you, know, I, you should take a note that a lot of them are yellow. That's a, that's a lack of nutrient. I should have mentioned that. There's no nutrient in that. It's sterile, and it's also uh, uh, totally lacks nutrient. It's almost pure peat moss. Right? So this I should have been uh, feeding. Uh, and you can do that with a very light uh, 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 fish emulsion. Be aware that this thing stinks and that whole place is going to stink. Now, this plant, first it has no food in there, and it's a tiny little pot, and it's getting really kind of tight, and things like that. So what I do, because these plants still have, uh, you know, I mean, uh, let's say it's uh, uh, mid-April, it still have a uh, month and a half to go outside and it's already this big and I don't want to keep it in there. So what I do is that I transfer them to a, a pot like this, right? And to do this, and now I can, this is not a, a seedling, it won't have the problem with damping off, so you can use your own garden soil. You certainly will want to add maybe something like this, which is a replacement for peat moss, because you don't want to have something too you know, clayish and, and, and hard in those spots. You want something that breathes and then hold moisture. Um, and you can use, I would just use, if you, if you have good garden soil, that's kind of a nice, and then just use a little bit of peat moss, make a nice mix. Now, once you get that, here, that's where you uh, teach the kids to be very gentle. I take that upside down, and then I squeeze, put my fingers on each side of the plant here, and I squeeze that. You don't want to pull on it it's not coming out. If you pull too hard, then you lose the roots, you destroy it. Now it's coming out. Then I got it with my fingers there. Now here, I, uh, now the, the kids, when they, uh, you give them them, they fill this up and then try to make a hole in there. So that's not good. The way I want to do it, I put a little bit in there, put my plant in there, and then I fill it up. All right? And the only thing you need to do is with your fingers like this, and that's it. So you don't break up the soil? Well, you know, I would do that, you know, if the roots were really root bound, okay. you know, and then if you really stress your plant and it stays there for two, three months, you know, it's really not good and some plants will never make it. Then you would break that root, that root bed. Now the thing I might do, I usually don't do that when I put that, but when I put it outside, I pinch the leaves. I do that especially for my cabbage and uh, sometimes when I do it, I pinch those leaves off like that. It, yeah, all the, the closest one. And the reason behind that is that the plant needs to put all its energy in producing root, more root right away. And the least leaves that there are on the top, or less leaves there are on the top, more they can uh, 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 send that energy to the roots at first. And then it'll, it'll reward you for doing this by... And usually, when the, by the time you take your, ca your cabbage, your know, family cauliflower and all that out, you have two yellow leaves on the bottom. And tomatoes also, they have kind of a spraggy little leaves. That just get rid of all of that. Now, always when you see, I do transplant water immediately. I mean, I do the whole flat, then I water. You know, don't let them, those roots, I mean, if there are, those roots are in dry soil, uh, I mean, you're stressing, the dry soil is gonna suck moisture and then stress the plant. For the watering, and that's the thing, I know that from, uh, uh, the, the school. Those plants, they, they need to be moist at all time. Moist, not in water, but they need to be moist. You can't. If, if a plant starts to wilt, you already have done some damage. And you don't realize it, it comes right back. But actually, that plant has a, actually a, a low uh, cellular damage. 
and it will take. What happens is that you're not going to notice, but that plant is not going to grow for one or two weeks. You set them back. They have to recover from that. So try to keep that moist. Now it's very difficult in the school. Uh, you, you have uh, you know holidays and stuff like that. Boom, there's three days, four days, you know, uh, uh, where you're not going to be there. So the way I do that, and you know, when I encourage you, is I use uh, saran wrap or cellophane. Now if you go to uh, Walmart or Cup Food, they sell you this little thing. That's not going to work. So they, uh, you need those big restaurant rolls. And go to the restaurant and say, you know, I'm a school teacher, I need it, uh, can you order one for me? You know, pay for it, and they might even give it to you. All right. Order them to the cafeteria too. Yeah, there you go, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I just go, they have them at Sam's Club. All right, so find them, find them. And those things are just perfect. It's just the right size for your uh, seedlings. You put it in there, you pull it, cut it, and then don't press it. It can just sit there, it's just exactly the right size. It may, even if there is aeration. And then you can leave for four, you water nicely before, you leave for four days, and it's, uh, uh, it stay moist, right? Without worrying when you come back. What about when there's that size around all? Yeah, same. I, I do it, I mean, when the kids have their, uh, when all their stickers there, I take two, I, I cut it and I put one, because of the sticker, it's so high, I put two thing, and they, it kind of sticks in the middle, all right? Um, I do that also, when I want to really my seeds to go fine, it's kind of a little cool. So I water with really lukewarm, nice warm water. And then I put my cellophane over it and just keep my moisture, my, uh, my heat and moisture in there. Kind of, uh, I think, accelerate my germination rate, you know, instead of waiting a whole week to see if something sprouted. Uh, now, something very important. Uh, I, uh, I, I take my plants. My house plants, I'm going to tell you my cactus and all that. Uh, outside every year, you know, and just give them a little uh, vacation. Uh, they, they suffer during the winter and put them out. And then the, the first couple of years I did this, I put some directly on the patio in full sun. And what happened? I mean, and they had water and everything. But boom, I, I, I swear, those things, someone with a cable with a flamethrower and burned those guys. I mean, really. I lost some plants and some were really badly damaged. And I don't know the science behind it. I don't know what it is exactly, but I, my theory is that plants are exactly like people. If they are not, if, they, if you keep them indoor, they don't have sun resistance. And they have what they call sun scald or uh, sun burn. And so what I do, my plants now, the house plants, I take them in the back of the house where it's shaded all day long. And they sit there for a couple of weeks until uh, they, they, they get this uh, immunity, if you will. Now, I do it exactly the same thing with my uh, seedlings. I put them, I uh, find uh, at the school uh, somewhere and, uh, along a wall with shaded on it, and then I put them on there. I make sure they have water. Another thing, when you move them out too, and you can see that there are a little uh, uh, roots, and then especially, I mean, sometimes the roots go through underneath there, and you pull that off, those roots get damaged and, and dry. So when you put them outside, make sure you water them and then you keep them really moist you know, for a little while. Uh, and I, I let them harden like this for at least a week. And it harden them for the sun, but also for the cold. Right? Because they, they have kind of the perfect environment, warm water temperature, but you know, often when you take them out, the nights are still like down to 40 degrees. Be careful, eh? basil is not going to like 40 degrees. Uh, you wait a little bit for basil, you know. Um, most of the plants will tolerate 40 degrees, you know, they just slow down, things like that.